Hey, Brandon. Hi, Andrea. How are you today? Good. We were just kind of chatting about uh, our group counseling session yesterday that you hosted with Sandra on the team. Sounded yeah. amazing. It was fantastic. We had a really nice audience, some great questions, and we had a good conversation about clearing and our circle of influence. I love it. Uh, there's so much in the media right now about what we can be doing to protect ourselves and like boost our immune system, which is confusing, especially with the way that this virus behaves. So then we hear like, do it, don't do it, do it, don't do it. And ultimately, I think our best protection is sitting in our circle of influence and making sure that we are nutrient replete. So first and foremost, not depleting our nutrient stores with foods that rob our body of essential nutrients, like sugar is mm -hmm. a robber of essential nutrients. And I think Sandra posted on one of our internal channels today about how Krispy Kreme is providing donuts to all hospital workers, like really not what we wanna be seeing because we want to replete, not deplete our nutrient stores, especially when we're under more stress. So, you know, if we can clear the sugar, the refined sugar, that's gonna help us as a baseline. But then people are taking lots of supplements. And I have to say, Brandon, I've been thinking a lot about this and this always concerns me, not because these supplements are bad, but because we're self-medicating, we're self-boosting and we don't know about our own individual bodies. So there's nothing wrong with the supplements that you're taking likely, but we wanted to talk a little bit about zinc because yeah. zinc is definitely an immune supportive mineral and it's fine to take zinc in what we were talking about with the group counseling 15 to 30 milligrams um, a day for a short period of time but typically in the in our counseling services we wouldn't be recommending zinc without doing a little test to see if the body is deficient because when we supplement with things that we're not deficient in because our diet provides what we need, we could then move into the realm of an oversufficiency, which causes an imbalance. So we can look up those imbalances out there in the realm of nutrition on paper and textbooks, but it's different when we get to our body. And this is the realm that's more in what we call symbiosis or nutrigenomics, where we're thinking about how does diet, lifestyle, nutrition that we take through supplementation impact our own genetic expression. So I'm going to pause there for a minute and just say zinc supplementation in that dosage, short term, fine, right, Brandon? You bet. Yeah. In it, most cases, the key word, in most cases, <laughs> and I think you said in the short term, it's it, it might be especially um, supportive right now as um, an uh, an anti antioxidant, anti-inflammatory while we're in this in this state of uh, fending off viruses. Yeah. So quickly, if we were to do a zinc assay test, are you able to speak into that? How we would recommend people do that if they have a liquid zinc at home? Yeah, um, uh, maybe you can help me on the, yeah, discerning the, the results. Um, I don't have that in front of me, but we would just, we would take a up to a teaspoon of a liquid zinc, um, uh, I believe it's a liquid zinc sulfate. Yep. Um, and we would hold it on our tongue, um, administer it on our tongue and hold it there and see if we, what we taste, if anything at all. Um, and there are some different levels of, of taste that we might have, anything from no taste, to a really strong taste. And that um, uh, sensation um, of, I, I kind of think of it as a little bit of a metal taste yeah. um, in my mouth, yeah, um, can give us an indication of whether we're deficient um, and to what degree. So if we're not tasting it at all, then it's likely that we would benefit from some zinc supplementation. And if it's super strong and we kind of cringe and go do the yuck factor, then it's likely that we have enough. Yep. Anything Absolutely. to add to that? No, you got it. Thank you for okay. explaining yeah. that. So if you happen to have liquid zinc at home, 
it's a great mm -hmm. way of doing just a you know kind of rudimentary at home test to see does my body need zinc again if you supplement with zinc during this time for a few weeks to support immune system function and your antioxidant function, great. We should be getting enough zinc in our foods from great sources like nuts and seeds and oysters. What else, Brandon? Organ meats. Organ uh, meats. Oats, lima beans. Those are some of the ones that I think those are the biggies. Yeah, and that and yeah. that's these foods um, provide us with the nutrients we need most of the time. We also have to synthesize these nutrients. So there might be things individual to you or those that you care about that are absorbing more of that nutrient that make it so that we do need to supplement. So supplementation is for, with nutrients is typically done when we are uh, have tested for a deficiency in some way or another, or we suspect a deficiency based on a number of clinical factors. We are typically not going, oh, here's the situation, take this. It's just yeah. not, from a functional perspective, what we do. We don't take supplements based on a condition. We take supplements based on an individual uh, assessment that we're doing that could be a number of things, number of factors, number of lab results, whatever it may be. And that's where we're then bringing things in. So it's individualized in that way. And first and foremost, we want to eat the foods that contain those nutrients and make sure that the diet itself is replete in the nutrient. Now, zinc and copper have a mm. relationship with each other that we need to be thinking about from a number of factors. And that balance is important, not worrisome important, like, oh my gosh, is my zinc copper in ratio? That should just happen naturally in our bodies. It's one of the things we don't need to think about that much. But when we are supplementing or have an oversufficiency of one, Brandon, any thoughts on what we should be thinking about there? Yeah, I think uh, the, where my mind goes when it comes to this balance between zinc and copper is certainly um, the cancer train and being concerned about um, uh, if we're supplementing with zinc, oh, do I have enough copper to keep that in balance? And um, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't supplement with copper because um, it's something that feeds the cancer terrain. So um, it's, not a, it's not a situation of chasing one after the other um, and looking to add in supplemental copper to um, uh, complement our zinc intake. Um, so for that reason, I would, would, wouldn't be looking to um, necessarily honor that, that ratio um, and, then, and recognizing what's true for ourselves. Yeah, that comes to my mind too, because before I was in the field, we of course were dealing with Isamu, my husband's cancer, and uh, with brain tumors in particular, copper is a feeder of the cancer train. So we were looking to eliminate the foods that had copper. Again, these are very specific situations. We're not here to say, go into alarm mode, the body is meant to do certain functions for us in the act of balancing. This is what in functional medicine, functional nutrition, we call homeodynamics. And homeodynamics is, you know, it was previously known as homeostasis. The body is in balance. And we just call it from a functional perspective, homeodynamics, because it's always moving. It's surfing and it comes and finds the body, finds its balance. And what we're doing when we're looking at things through a functional perspective is saying, where is there a little bit of an imbalance or a big imbalance that we rectify to bring the body into its holistic realm? of healing. And these nutrients can inadvertently be ways that we actually introduce an imbalance just as a healing diet for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. These diets that are very um, reduce or eliminate a lot of key food groups can introduce imbalances. So we're saying this not to cause you not to do something you're doing, but more to say like, tune into your body, food first, body and lifestyle practices first, 
and then think, am I supplementing? How am I supplementing? How long am I supplementing? And let me tune into my body to make those decisions. Do you feel like that, Brandon? says it what we're trying to communicate today brilliantly yeah yeah i think really good takeaways for people um not get lost in the weeds as we like to say of the of the specifics but of the recommendations body, yeah of the recommendations yeah and trust that our body is doing what it needs to do to take care of us awesome thank you brandon thank you andrea great conversation <laughs>